This is the story of Africa's great migration and the balance of grass, predators, and prey. Hi there, I'm Chris Stamper and I'm a safari guide in Africa. At the moment, we're in the Serengeti and we're here to witness a great migration that happens every year where over 2.2 million animals migrate through the Serengeti. The Serengeti is situated in East Africa, in northern Tanzania and southern Kenya. The reason why the wildebeest make such a large migration every year is for grass. Here in the southern plains, the short grass feeds them and also facilitates the birthing. But the southern plains only have one rainy season each year. The north has two rainy seasons each year. So after these plains dry up, they move northwards and that will sustain them until the following year when they move back down to once again return to the southern plains. So we're here in the southern Serengeti in the short grass plains. Over the last few weeks we've had some incredible storms which have come in from the nearby lakes sucking up water and dumping it down here on the plains. Rain has greened up grass plains. The wildebeest have pulled out of the woodland onto the green plains and are preparing to birth in mass. Over the next month, over 300,000 wildebeest are going to be born. When the wildebeest cows are ready to calve, they form tight birthing groups. This allows them to stay together and look out for any predators that may be in the area. It's imperative that when the female gives birth, it's a quick process and within a few minutes, that young little calf is standing up, wobbling on his feet and taking his first steps. With the amount of wildebeest calves that are being born each day, it provides a huge opportunity for feeding for some of the large predators, like lion, cheetah, leopard, hyena, or to get their full. Once these grasslands start drying up, the wildebeest through a myriad, some go into the western corridor, the Grumeti area of the Serengeti, close to the shores of Lake Victoria. Others go up through the central parts and eventually they all meet and it culminates along the iconic Mara River. Okay, so coming to the end of the dry season now in the, in the Serengeti, expecting rains at any point in time. You can see around me the grass is incredibly short. In the first wave of the migration, often the zebra come, the grass will be up to my, up to my waist in, in length and the zebra will come through, flatten it together with the resident um, buffalo, they will bulk graze, take the, the much longer uh, and sometimes the harder stalks of the grasses away. The zebra do it because they've got teeth on both the top and the bottom jaw and that helps to cut through the grass and then open it up for the wildebeest who then feed on it. They've only got teeth on the bottom jaw and then they'll make it even shorter so that uh, little animals like the Thompson's gazelle which come in the final wave can use their tiny little mouths to feed on the small bits of grass uh, very close to the roots and above the soil. Then what happens is over here you can see a lot of the grass is sitting out here without the roots. So our friends, the warthogs, they come along and they use their snout and their cartilaginous disc. They go down on their, their knees and what they'll do is they'll pull up the grass and feed on the, the, the roots. During the dry months, a lot of the moisture and nutrients is stored um, in, the, in the rhizomes. So uh, there we go, the circle of life in terms of grass. What happens is they are a multitude of ongoing isolated thunder showers and rain might fall here 
forcing a lot of wildebeest to cross back south, risking their life and limb to cross over the river infested with crocodiles, a huge current, and also the chance of being stampeded and, and, and trampled to death. So it really is one of the most amazing spectacles on earth to sit on the edge of the Mara River, waiting in anticipation and as these wildebeest decide whether or not they're gonna cross. They come down in large numbers, circling, waiting, and, until the first one makes the plunge. And once the first few are across, or starting to cross, the rest follow. And sometimes you can have as many as 20,000 or more wildebeest crossing at one time. It really is a phenomenal spectacle. With the wildebeest pressing to cross, a group of elephants showed up and crossed from the other side and blocked the crossing point. And they just kept chasing off the wildebeest. Finally, they gave up and left, and the wildebeest started to come down again. You can imagine with so many wildebeest, zebra, eland and gazelle which make the migration each year, there's a lot of meat on offer for the carnivores and predators out here like lions, leopards, wild dog, cheetah, hyena and all these predators get their fill. Once they're finished, birds like your marabou stork and many different species of vulture will come in and feed on the leftovers. And so it's not only about the wildebeest. And so we finish our story of the Great Migration. But the cycle continues on and on.